Hello everybody, Gamer Penny here, bringing you another episode of our Final Fantasy XIV Online Let's Play. And we are back with Vesper, and we're going to <laughs> we're gonna continue on the main story quest today. So let's go ahead and talk to Urian J. <clears throat> I dare say Master Fortuna was, non was as nonplussed as we to learn the identity of Hydaelyn's Lunar Custodians. As he will soon discover, they have much and more to offer the Forum. I just suggest we return to the Annex forthwith. We may yet have time to discuss thy recent adventures ere we are summoned to the Rostra. Okay, we can go back there. Ooh. Sightseeing thing over there. Let's get a new minion out. We've had this buffalo out for quite a while. What did we get? Little Lease! Find a police. Where are we going? We're going up there. Let's go ahead and take one of these. Well, Desi and the Annex. Not that I'm complaining, Uriange, but I wasn't expecting to see you quite so soon. Nor I thee. In extolling the virtues of Aetherus, I did inadvertently awaken in the Loperates a desire to avert our beloved star's demise. Kryle tells us you have obtained new knowledge that may aid us in our ongoing efforts. I have news to share regarding our study of the Ethereal Sea, but your findings are certain to be of greater interest, so I would rather hear them first. What revelations did Hyland's Elpis Flower lead? You guys will have no. <laughs> you guys have no idea what I've been through. Then this dynamis it was is what drives the final days. If it and the Akasa or Akasha, are one and the same, this all but proves Nidana's theory. We're an entity through sheer force, force of emotion to channel this vast dormant reservoir into a raging river, its power might surpass even that of Aether. But if our star is so replete with Aether, said entity would need to be outside its influence to effectively manipulate the dynamis of the Great Expanse. Meteon. Or rather, the sorrow and suffering of fallen civilizations that she has been hoarding for millennia. Untold anguish and fear and hatred, drawn from every corner of the universe, all for a single purpose, the destruction of Aetherus. And our foe is no longer some unknow unknow unknowable calamity. We have but one aim, to defeat Medion. You make it sound so simple, but you're not wrong. Vanquish Medion and we deliver the world from the final days, but to even attempt it, there are two conditions. First, we must determine her location. Before Medion escaped, an enchantment was placed upon her by Vana, the woman who would become Hydaelyn. The implications of temporal magics are not entirely understood, and so we cannot assume that our Hydaelyn and Vana you met in Elpis are one and the same. Nevertheless, due to her intrinsic qualities as an all-powerful being, I'd wager that Hydaelyn possessed the knowledge we seek. Whether she would share that knowledge with us, however, remains to be seen. After all, she intends for us to flee Aetherus, not to stay. Do you suppose she has abandoned her pursuit of Medion? The Vana I know would never give up.
That's my impression too. Otherwise, she wouldn't have used me as a conduit of her will or provided clues such as the Elpis flower. I believe she has been waiting. For mankind's answer to Hermes' question. So what's the second condition? We must find, the mean, find a means to reach Medion. Naturally, our chosen method will depend entirely upon wheresoever she has made her nest. Then communion with Hydaelyn must be by necessity come first. Did you and Master Matoria have any luck with your investigation into the Ethereal Sea? Sadly not. Though we enlisted the help of Arnvald and other Echo-blessed allies, we couldn't detect so much as a whisper from Hydaelyn, even from within the Anti-Tower. Master Matoya is of the opinion that in the years since abandoning it, the Forum has found some other method of receiving instructions from Hydaelyn. If so, it would most likely be some form of apparatus for observing the Ethereal Sea built closer to home. Sorry to interrupt, but we just received word from the Forum. Your presence is required in the Rostra, where they intend to discuss the Great Exodus. Then Father was able to persuade them. They're finally taking us seriously. Let's hear what they have to say. All right, let's go to the Rostra. Sorry, I had to step away there for like a day. <laughs> Started recording and uh, got distracted by something else, so. Okay, Rostra. We can take this. Rostra steward. Forum is in session, and as such, the Rostra is closed to visitors. Scion of the Seventh Dawn. Very well, you may wait in the corridor. Of course, entry will only be permitted on the condition you leave your armaments at the door. Lest you forget, the sacred institution holds rational discourse in the highest. The implements of war are expressly forbidden. Well, taking mine anyway. <laughs> you didn't take it. You must be nervous. There is a matter I wish to raise with you before we enter. We are here to listen and to learn. But if the forum's plans are more or less what I expect, then I should like to make a proposal that will serve our ends. By your leave, of course. I don't see why not. Your words and wits have gotten us this far. Agreed. I will present our queries so that you may consider the most advantageous way to advance your proposal without distraction. Thank you, everyone. If I may have your attention, the ad hoc session will now commence. The purpose of today's assembly is to brief the Scions of the Seventh Dawn at their request on the Great Exodus. You may enter. Oh, they did take our weapons and everything.
He's so nervous. <laughs> Aww. On behalf of the Forum, I commend your heroic actions on the Magna Glacius. We shall not soon forget your service to us and the people of Radzat Han. The Satrap, whom we have informed of the refugees' new arrangements, sings your praises as well. As an expression of our gratitude, we will endeavor to answer your questions as fully and openly as we are able. Then let us begin. First, it is the Forum's objective to ferry the life and knowledge of this star to the moon. Am I correct? You are. It is for this purpose that Charlian has labored these many long years. We have collected biological samples and scientific records from across the star. When the time comes, they will be moved from their places in Labyrinthos and Numenon and conveyed to safety. Once that critical task has been accomplished, we will begin transporting the Charlian citizenry, which has been categorized into groups. The earliest arrivals are to ensure hospitable environs for those who come after. Following our people, we will send those of other nations in turn, beginning with our allies. Radzat Han was foremost among these, but since the final days have already come to Thavnir, we saw fit to include the refugees with earlier groupings. An ambitious plan. You have accounted for the safety of all nations and tribes, then? As many as we can. And how, pray tell, do you decide who to leave behind? Mm. To journey beyond the sky is an unprecedented and immeasurably difficult endeavor. Introducing sources of inevitable conflict would condemn all to certain death. Questions as to the validity of that approach aside, are your plans proceeding apace? We're under the impression that your primary means of celestial transportation is incomplete. Your ship's not done. If only in that it does not meet our optimal parameters, that is correct. This arc, as some have taken to calling it, is fully operational and could be launched even today. However, the final days have progressed more quickly than we anticipated. At present, the ship is incapable of attaining speeds sufficient to meet our evacuation targets. Should we put the vessel into service as it is now, we will be unable to travel to the moon and back quickly enough to complete the necessary number of trips. Precious lives and knowledge will be lost. Seven hells. Is there anything to be done? The ether burner. The primary means of propulsion, once the craft is in the space between stars, is undergoing testing to determine whether it can be made more efficient. Though cargo is being loaded for the initial phase of the Exodus, we are prepared to continue our experimentation up to the day before launch, should it prove necessary. What if the Scions were to solve your problem? Uh-oh. Here we go. We shall help devise a means to improve the ether burner's efficiency on two conditions. If we succeed, you must allow us to meet with Hydaelyn. It was simple enough to deduce. You have a Concord, and so you would never have abandoned the Anti Tower had you no other means of communication. One far more convenient, I suspect. The second condition, also to be met upon our success, is that we be permitted to propose another use for your Ark. Oh, that's gonna be a hard sell. 
He's like, you Will promised, you be Alfino. Will liberty to refuse this proposal? Of course. If we cannot prove its merit to the 99 here, who are we to stake on it the lives of all peoples of this star? <laughs> <laughs> Delightful as always, Master Alfino. <laughs> I love him. <laughs> We couldn't have asked for a finer plan. Allow us to solve this complex engineering problem of which we were entirely unaware until moments ago. What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> the satire writes itself. Oops. <laughs> Yet, what field has not benefited from a change in perspective? When we are at wit's end, what we need is not the same dry theories recited ad nauseam, but fresh inspiration. I, for one, have faith in my erstwhile students to provide it, and I find their terms to be perfectly acceptable. Order! Order! We have no time to waste on debate. I call a vote. All in favor of agreeing to the Scion's terms? Hmm, we're getting lots of votes here. It's gonna be enough. Seventy-one in favor, twenty-eight against. The eyes have it. Oh, For you know, as the hand. architect of this project, you are the best candidate to show them its current state. And bear in mind that regardless of your personal misgivings, this is the will of the Forum. Very well. Call this session to a close. Return to your tasks with urgency. The final days wait for none. Interesting. How does Elfino know um, how to make a propulsion system? Sorry about not letting the rest of you in on my plan. I was admittedly thinking on my feet for the most part. But since we require both a means of communicating with Heidelin and reaching Medion, in the spur of the moment I saw involving ourselves with the completion of the Ark as a way to work towards both objectives simultaneously. However, we must first keep our end of the bargain by solving the problem of the Aether Burner. I'd like to think it is not a challenge beyond our combined expertise, or at least the expertise of our extended circle of associates. It might behoove us to learn how an aether burner actually works before we attempt to improve it, though. <laughs> hey, Fortunal. Ooh, you're gonna give us a new chest piece, huh? Hmm. As instructed, I shall take you to see the aether burner. Meet me outside the Archeon. I trust you can make your own way there. So the Ark is being built in Labyrinthos. Hardly surprising. Where else could they conceal such a massive undertaking? Alright. How do you get out of this place now? Down this way. Hello, sightseeing. Flash lookout. Perfect. Where are we going? Ah, we've got this. Okay. Open a soda here, real quick. Boop. I diet, Dr. Pepper. All right, Fortunal. Are 
Our destination lies in the lower levels. The form in its wisdom has granted you access to the Archeon's lift. Step inside and have Ophelin take you to the medical remedial circuit. <coughs> Alright, let's go. Ha, Ophelin. You wish to use the lift, yes? Medial circuit, please. I have sent your associates ahead to Logisticon Alpha on the other side of Mariel Argonomics. Actually, there's something I've been meaning to... No, never mind. It can wait. Let us attend to the matter at hand. No, oh, talk to me. I'm willing to talk. Lost little troll, huh? This mount's too big. This mount's too big. <laughs> this one's fine. Do, do, do. We'll stop and get that um, blue check. It's gonna be hard to get all the aether currents around here. Let's try to get it though. Northeast. it's down here and not up. I think it might be up. South East. Next to the north. Oh, it's down there. East. No, get out of here. Don't think. All right, let's get this blue check quest first. <clears throat> Directed archivist. Oh, dearie me. My sweetest shagels, or one of the Archeon's precious samples has fled. You have no idea what I'm talking about, do you? My apologies. I'm Noelle Tia, an archivist. The Archeon is home to various samples collected from across the star, and one such specimen has just escaped. A young troll, to be specific. Oh, I hope he hasn't been set upon by the local predators. Listen, I promised to compensate you, so could you please help me retrieve the specimen? My thanks. I will continue my search of this area. I'd like you to check the 33rd facet. Once you've had a comprehensive look about, please meet me at the Archeon to report your findings. Alright. 
We gotta go up there anyway. See no trolls, great or small, perhaps a bit further in. Ah, there's our aether current. Oh, okay. Go up and around. What are we doing with aether currents here? Not so hot. Got six more to find out in the wild. Seven twenty to the west. Okay. Trolls nowhere to be seen. Noelle Tia may have had better luck. He is up here, so let's go up there. Noelle Tia, did you find your troll? See, I was unable to find the specimen either. <clears throat> Excuse me. However, I did meet someone who claimed to have seen it in Mournville Forest. Let us head there and see if we can track it down. Do do do. We're getting sidetracked. That's a okay with me. Six thirty-four to the southwest. There he is. Yes, there can be no doubt. These are Shagel's footprints, right? That's him? Ahem, I have uncovered the specimen's trail. It should be close. If you find it under threat from the local fauna, you may dispatch its assailants. This is not it right here? Oh, this is a normal troll. Oh. Jagles. Let's get him. And Wing Sauce leaves me right when we get here, huh?
Look how cute little Shales is. Aww. Hi, Shagels. Oh, I'm so glad you're unharmed. Or you're- yeah, you're unharmed. You're all safe now. Come on, let's go home, sweetie. Berlin's buffoon, grrr. <laughs> Garakian is under threat. I must do something, grrr. What is this threat? Grr, you can understand me? Wait, are you able to communicate with him? Incredible! I've never met someone with such a skill before. This bundle of joy was born in Labyrinthos. However, he was abandoned by his mother and in quite the state by the time we found him. He possesses remarkable intelligence for one of his kind. We've elected to use him as part of a study into the effects of growing up in an artificial environment. I had seen him making gestures that indicated he'd been reading the tomes here, but I thought he was just copying those around him. I think he actually understands speech. Though I do wonder exactly why you are able to understand him and I am not. I'm sort of special. <laughs> really? Oh, I wouldn't have given in to understand him too. Oh. Let me try that again. Really? Oh, what I wouldn't give to understand him too. Gur, you possess the echo, don't you? I find it difficult to gur the way you kind do, but I suppose it makes sense that you understand my general sentiments. I happen to learn of said power from the tomes in the Archeon. Honestly, that buffoon over there is surrounded by a sea of knowledge and he makes no effort to engage with it. Grrr. At any rate, I'm glad to finally have someone to talk to. As I was saying earlier, the Archeon is in grave danger. Some girless gleaner managed to bring woodworms in with them during a visit. We leave them be, they're bound to cause irreparable damage to the materials at the facility. I tried my best to tell that buffoon, but it was no use. That's why I took a chance and went in search of some on my own kind to see if they would help. But well, you saw how that turned out. Well, what is he saying? Oh, dearie me. Still, it was most courageous of him to try and solve the issue on his own. Now that we're aware of it, we need to sort out this pest problem one at once. Would you mind helping a little longer? You're the only one who can understand him after all, and he seems moms ahead of us with regard to the situation at hand. Thank you. Can I get him as a pet? Jiggles. I'm sorry. Can't do this right now. We'll have to come back at some point. Okay. Alright, where was that Aether current? Southwest. Alright, I don't think we can get there from here. Hello, little Poporo.
Here we gotta go down. Dang it. I just want to get down. We gotta go back through this. Man, if this were not an MMO, I'd think this would be a big boss fight. A boss arena. Maybe there's a fate in there or something. To the west. Alright, we can pr probably do it now. Come out here and just head straight this way. Might be down again. Yeah, I think it's down another level. Alright. Hello, everybody. Sorry for the delay. I had to go get shagles. We are to wait here while our father arranges for us uh, to use the next lift. Here, being logist Logisticon Alpha, where the atmospheric conditions of Labyrinthos are regulated. Water is drawn from underground and dispersed as vapor, stimulating the formation of artificial clouds and rain. By manipulating the temperature and air circulation, they are able to create the ideal environment for the growth and preservation of the biological samples kept here. Hold on, how do you know so much about it? Why, father brought me here as a child. What? And left me behind? Actually, you're the one who left me behind when you went off somewhere with Grandfather. The night before, I'd been asking Father how clouds are made, so he decided to show me. Fascinating. I peppered him with questions the entire time. It is all too easy to take for granted the many interweaving aspects of the natural world, to grow inured to the wondrous. But having gained an understanding of the complex mechanisms employed by the Loperates in recreating a similar environment, I have come to view such processes in a new light. Subterranean gardens of Labyrinthos, the lunar prison forged to contain the ancient Zodiac, the habitations built for all mankind neath the moon's surface, each unique yet undeniably similar. It is no mere coincidence. Ever since Heidelin unfolded to us the grim fate that awaits Aetherius, every essential resource we could spare has been delivered to Labyrinthos in preparation for the Great Exodus, but that is not all. It is also a testing ground for the technologies that will allow us to settle on distant stars. Though the Loperates have endeavored to make the moon inhabitable, that is not our final destination. Mankind must learn to propagate life where there is none, to thrive where all is barren. Alas, time is not on our side. I have arranged for you all to enter the central circuit. It is there that most of our preparations for the great exodus are carried out, the construction of the Ark among them. 
Though our plans have been made public, access remains highly restricted. You, however, will not be subject to said restrictions, and will have free reign to come and go as you please. Such was the will of the Forum, after all. We will prove ourselves worthy of their trust. Your trust. Then let us proceed. Papa Fortuno. <laughs> Alphano. Alright, let's go down to that level. By decree of the form, the Scions of the Seventh Dawn are permitted to enter the Central Circuit. The Aether Burner is being constructed not far from here. Overseeing the work is Kokel Dankul, after whom the forge is named. Once the necessary introductions have been made, I shall leave you with him to discuss the particulars. This way. Okay, one second, let me... 191 Northwest. I see it. It's right over there. Perfect. Um, ooh, there's an Aetherite. Charlie and Hamlet. Good. Go get that. Is there another Aether Current anywhere? 395 to the northwest. Okay. Hop on this. somewhere one sixty two to the north. See it. Stuck in this circle, though. Help. Shouldn't have gone in here. <laughs> right up there. I was hoping not to fight this stupid thing. There we go. Get the Aether Current.
Okay. How are we doing on them now? Got four more. Alright. Another one around here. 292 to the northwest. there. Okay, we'll have to get that one later. In fact, I think we're gonna go ahead and end the episode here, and then when we come back, we'll continue the main story quest, and we'll go see, um, this after- or this aether burner, um, and see uh, what we can do with it, so. Guys, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up here. I want to thank you so much for all of your support on this series. If you do want to see more of the Final Fantasy XIV online Let's Play, make sure to leave a like or subscribe to the channel. Otherwise, I will see you guys next time. All right, bye-bye, everyone.